Hi, this is Lindsay Scott, and I am redoing my week seven, chapter seven, case study and worksheet because the video somehow didn't have sound on it. Not sure what happened. Case study 17-1, pediatric brain tumor. BEC, a six-year-old first grade student, was referred to a pediatric neurologist by his primary pediatrician for a neural consult. He had presented with an o acute onset of headaches, vomiting on waking in the morning, and progressive ataxia. The neurologist conducted a thorough neuro exam in order to CT scan, MRI, and lumbar puncture, LP, to look for possible tumor cells. When the LP revealed suspicious cells and the scan showed a tissue density, he was referred to a neurosurgeon for treatment of a suspected infratentorial astrocytoma of the posterior fossa. BC had a craniotomy with a tumor resection five days later. The cerebellar tumor was found to be non-infiltrating and was enclosed within a cyst, which was totally removed. BC spent two days in the neurological intensive care unit, NICU, because he was on seizure, seizure precautions and monitoring for increased intracranial pressure, ICP. A regimen of focal radiation followed after recovery from surgery. His spine was also treated because of the potential spread of tumor cells in the C CFF. BC did not have chemotherapy because of the danger that he might develop hydrocephalus, which generally requires, intra requires a ventro ventro ventricle peritoneal shunt, ventricular peritoneal shunt. BC was discharged six days after his surgery with mild hemiparesis, which is expected to resolve within the next few weeks. He was scheduled for a six week of outpatient rehabilitation and his prognosis was good. Case study 17-2, cerebrovascular accident, CVA. AR, 62-year-old man, was admitted to the ER with, hemiple with right hemiplegia and aphasia. aphasia. He had a history of hypertension and recent transient ischemic attacks. Yet he was in good health and he experienced a sudden onset right-sided weakness. He arrived in the ER via ambulance and within 15 minutes of the onset and with 15 minutes of onset and was received by a member of the hospital stroke team. He had a rapid general assessment and neuro exam, including a Glasgow coma scale, G GCS ratings to determine his candidacy for, fib for fibron fibronolytic therapy. He was sent for a non-contrast CT to look for evidence of hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke, post-cardiac arrest ischemia, hypertensive encephalopathy, encephalopathy, craniocerebral or cervical trauma, meningitis, encephalitis, encephalitis, brain abscess, tumor, and subdural epidermal hematoma. The CT scan read by the radiologist did not show intracerebral or subarachnoid hemorrhage. AR was discharged with a possible acute ischemic stroke within one hour of onset of symptoms and was cleared for a candidacy for immediate fibrolinitic treatment. He was, admitted, he was admitted to the NICU for 48 observation to monitor his neurostatus and vital signs. He was discharged after three days with a prognosis of full recovery. Case study 17-3, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. JN, a 21-year-old woman with chronic paranoid schizophrenia, was admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of pneumonia. She was brought to the ER by her mother, who said Jay had been very lethargic and had a fever of 104. She had, mus she had muscular rigidity for three days. She took Haddle and co Cognitin. Her mother stated that JN's neuroleptic medication had been changed the week before by her psychiatrist. Her secondary diagnosis was stated as neuroleptic malignant syndrome, a rare and life-threatening disorder associated with the use of antipsychotic medications. This drug-induced condition is usually characterized by alterations in the mental status, temper regulation, and the atomic and extrapyramidal functions. JN was monitored for potential hypotension, tachycardia, diaphysis, dyspnea, dysphagia, phagia, and changes in her level of consciousness. Her medications were discontinued and she was hydrated with IV fluids and her body temperature was monitored for fluctuations. She was treated with bromoscriptine, a dopamine antigen, and dantrolene, a muscle relaxant and anti- Basmatic. After five days, JN was transferred to a mental health facility and started on low dose neuro no low dose neuroleptics. She was monitored to prevent a recurrence. Both JN and her family were educated about neuroleptic malignant syndrome in preparation for her discharge back home in two weeks. The case study questions. 
one, a neurologist is a physician who, A, performs brain surgery, two, a diagnostic procedure in which fluid is withdrawn for the sub spinal surab subarachnoid space is A, parenthesis, <laughs> three, B sees tumor in the cerebr cere cerebellum, which controls voluntary movement, balance, and coordination. This motor dysfunction is called A, ataxia. Four, VP shunt that is surgical treatment for hydrocephalus excess SVF shunted from the B ventricles and peritoneal cavity. Ischemic stroke is generally caused by C throm thrombosis. Fibrolinetic therapy. Six, fibrolinetic therapy is directly towards the treatment of the blood clot in the artery by E dissolving and fib fibrin matrix. <laughs> Seven, a general term for any disorder or alteration of the brain tissue is B, encephalopathy. Eight, JN had a disease manifestations related to involuntary functions and to movement controlled by E, at, at, atomic and extrapyramidal. And right terms, case study the following meanings. Nine, a tumor of astrocytes is an astrocytoma. Ten, surgical opening into the skull is a craniotomy. Oh, Sorry, it's a cranoplasty. 11, sudden attack of typical epilepsy is a myoclonic seizure. Partial paralysis on one side is hemiplegia. 13, ability to speak or understand speech is aphasia. aphasia. 14, 14, inflammation of the mening meninges is meningitis. 15, collection of blood below the dura mater is a subdural hematoma. 16, perce perceived feeling of threat or harm is paranoid. 17, drug that relieves muscle spasm is dantrolene. And 18, antipsychotic medications is neuroleptics. And 19, a physician who treats psychiatric disorders is a psychiatrist.